We go uh, live for 10 minutes. Oh my gosh. That's that's going to be a problem. <laughs> that's, yeah. We're we, going to need we some, some damage problem, control. Yeah. You're yeah, going to need to call Mitch. Dark. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> Mitch. No. Somebody get the lawyers on the Is line. that B still in here? That B is still in here. Yeah. Have we determined, like, who's gotten stung and who's still alive? We've all been, I've been stung. stung and we're all still I've alive. Been stung, I I've been yeah. stung. I'm still alive. Once, so yeah. I'm good. You've okay. only been stung once, Josiah. You don't have a still mic here. Either, so it's hard to hear. So like still here. If he gets stung and goes into anaphylactic, anaphylaxis, anaphylactic, anaphylactic shock, anaphylaxis. Okay. <laughs> uh, is the fan too loud? Can you hear the fan? Yeah. Is that is the fan too it? loud in the back? Let us know. If it's annoying, we'll turn it off. But it was a little. Getting a little warm. Kind of toasty back. It here. was getting a little. It was also, getting a little are, warm. You, are you allergic to bees out there, anyone? Speaking of bees and yeah, there's a bee buzzing around here. So we were talking about this could be a bees. really good stream. Yeah, I watched. Obviously. Th- th- I have no proof of this other than you'll have to believe me. I once watched my friend from Iceland. His name is Otter. He shot a bee mid-flight, like what? obviously tr- like planned. Totally yeah. not random or just a happenstance thing that, you know, just occurred. Right. <laughs> but no, we were sh- shooting out back at my parents' house. Like this was before we built the firing pin. This is like the year we built the firing pin. Sure. He was on this crazy like backpacking tour. And yeah, shot a gun and a bee just like fucking disintegrated in front of That's us. It was awesome. amazing. Yeah. Yep. True story. Can you story. imagine that bee's perspective? Like <laughs> just a freight train coming at you. It's like, like an asteroid hitting us right uh, now. Uh, this is, this is <laughs> meteor. Sorry. And like bees are in danger too. So I feel bad about that. I was shaming him about that actually yesterday. He was texting me. He's in like Singapore shooting guns. Anyway, sorry. We are here at the firing pin. Live. Live. We're here. It's Thursday night. <laughs> People are watching this right now. It's so crazy. Should... Blows yeah. my mind. They're insane. Yeah. Where, where are they? So, uh, guys, and we have sponsors for this. We yeah, people, and we people should pay talk us about to do this. We should. We should. People we really. Speaking of Mitch, bills. actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Mitch is probably watching this right now. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about arms. Preservation Inc. API, a sponsor of Freedom Weekend, a sponsor Absolutely. of Freedom mm-hmm. Weekend, mm-hmm. as well as this stream. Mm-hmm. Uh, Arms Preservation Inc. As our regular listeners will know, they make uh, some very fine products for the preservation of all of your firearms and other valuables. Yeah, your gear, your ammo, whatever you've got, electronics, uh, jewelry, mm-hmm. what have you. Mm-hmm. Uh, ammo can liners, so convenient uh, storage of your ammunition in bulk quantities yeah and uh long-term storage for your firearms as well obviously we just went through a fire we know a little bit about losing stuff tyler you, you've experienced that as well yeah. uh you know every situation is different not saying that an api bag will protect your stuff in every scenario but for our case here our our the thing that damaged us the most was smoke and water. and water yeah and i think if we'd have you know not that it was feasible for us as a retail store but yeah. you know as a private person if i'd had all my stuff you know or even me as brandon i had a lot of my personal stuff here sure. if i'd had it in api bags i'd be better off absolutely you know and Wouldn't it's something been. i'm thinking of going forward Wouldn't you know have the smell and stuff mm-hmm. on it i've mm-hmm. already started like all of my collectibles and stuff that i like really extra care about they're all in api bags just i'm not saying there's gonna be another fire but if there is I, I brought it up as a meme, but I really do want to pay Mitch to make me like a giant one that we could like put a whole aisle of ammo in. <laughs> you know, like, let's just just mock it up, like bring some of the raw material out here right. one day and like, yeah, we'll just do a marketing thing. Like every night we just put all of our shelves in API bags. We can, when you make new shelves, we can drill a giant API bag to the back. Like, oh, back sure. So. Yeah, yeah. Just velcro. Or it's like a pool, you know, like an indoor pool. They have like the, the thing that just rolls out with the <laughs> yeah. thing. You have like a roll built into the <laughs> API. Amazing sponsors. We have another amazing sponsor, though, we do. that's been with us for a long time. I mean, they've been a sponsor of ours. Do we remember? I'm sorry they to put everybody on the spot. The first. Yeah. And it's been I, well over a year. Is it? Are we getting on two years with? I think, I think, I think it's, it's probably two. pushing two at this yeah. point. We'd have to go back mm-hmm. and look. But um, Beyond Driven Fitness and Performance amazing. in Leroy, Main Street in Leroy. Um, they have so many amazing opportunities for you to go get your fitness on, right? Uh, they have classes led by phenomenal instructors. They have 24 seven gym access. They have, uh, their beyond Academy, which is, uh, kicking off, I believe on three June. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with that Gender. program, um, they are basically assisting, uh, candidates for police agencies. Very cool to you know meet the physical yeah, requirements that's important for the yeah. testing right because that's obviously a big failure point for a lot of people mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. um they're also uh, on that same front they're involved with our friends over at american warrior foundation and their uh 
mentorship and uh, tutoring program. Super cool to help for those trying to enter the military. Yeah, for yeah. people that are future uh, soldiers and Marines out there. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, and there, that's a, a big, it's a big facility out there, right? Like bigger than but, you would think, yeah. right? For for a gym, it's yeah. a it's a very big. They have an upstairs, they have a downstairs area. And they have like their main floor. It's, mm-hmm. it's an impressive facility. Like I've never stuff? been there. They do. They have their Beyond Boxing program. That's cool. CrossFit. That's cool. Uh, they have a whole cardio. Should we sponsor like a TFP, do. like Golden Gloves? Who out there wants to hit each other? Is there people out there? I know Louis would. Do they do that? Oh, they, Ty, can you grab that? They, do they do boxing? And yeah, stuff? They, have, cool. they have boxing classes now. Oh, look at that. Do what is this? You. What is that? Oh, yeah. Can we go to the above? Yeah, oh, look at that. that. So, as a lot of you know, we have Freedom Weekend coming up June 10th and 11th. We are very excited. One, that Freedom Weekend is a weekend again. Right. There was a couple of years days. where it was just a, a single day event. And uh, we have some amazing guests right down here. Where is he? Spike Cohen, right? He's coming. If you don't know who Spike is, look him up on social media right now. You Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, he is relentless. If there are police departments, if there are uh public servants out there if there is abuse in the government he calls it out he brings attention to it he does. and he tries to write it and, and bring justice to you know places that need it he's a libertarian uh super cool guy he's been here before yes with our friend Dwayne uh through the libertarian party of former new york college athlete, Dwayne? former college athlete okay. yeah yeah uh, i think I, he's a current i think i was gonna say we, have, we need to drop that former he is just an athlete he's athlete a- Dane, Dwayne whitmer like just for life. <laughs> news broadcast. Yeah. Uh, we've got FPC coming firearms policy coalition. Again, they are the, the best in our opinion, gun rights group at a national level to support. They have been fighting the good fight out in California. That's where they started. I mean, if there's any um, like brother in arms of a state to New York, it's California. California I mean, we've got to stick together. They're, they're the two States that pass the dumbest and, uh, and and just most insane infringing laws against their citizens, trying to be helpful, typical government, trying to be helpful, right? Always. But uh, they've got five different lawsuits running right now in New York, FPC, and we need to support them. They are sending boots on the ground. And I was just absolutely blown away. Tyler and I, we reached out to them. I mean, I, I'm always hopeful, but I'm a realist too. I did not think we would get them to yeah. come under any circumstances. And they're sending not just one, but two guys, Sweet. one of the founders and one of their like top lawyers. Right. I know the founder is also a lawyer, but yeah, uh, they're they're it's one of their very early contributing people. Too. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Uh, abs- two absolutely amazing guys, absolutely dedicated to the Second Amendment and, and restoring people's rights and just getting the government out of our lives. That's right. what needs to happen. So they're going to have uh, speeches. We're going to be publishing a, a, a schedule. schedule very yeah. shortly here, uh, but we're going to have speeches by them at certain times. There's going to be uh, like town hall style, like Q and A's that you can attend. There's going to be, um, I don't know if any of them will get in the dunk tank, but we be so uh, fun. As, as we've mentioned, there's going to be a dunk tank. Uh, there's going to be prizes and raffles. We were just, we were just finishing up all that stuff today. We had such a good energy in the store this afternoon. Yeah, I loved it. Like yeah. we just got so much done. Uh, there's going to be a chicken dinner and a raffle combined, right? That uh, again, like say by Monday, we'll have the the, the tickets available, hopefully nice. uh, for you to buy. We'll have some available online. We've got a- Can I interrupt uh, real quick? Yeah, go ahead. I'm super, I, I don't want to give away too much, but Pat, we're doing this one raffle that it's going to break the internet. Come here, I'll whisper to you. You're, you're going to raffle off the barrel? No, sh- wait, no. Oh, not, not, not the gentleman's club. No, <laughs> um, we can't, we don't have right? rights to that. <laughs> that's amazing. That's going to be really cool. That's gonna so be really cool. that's going to be a very limited amount of tickets. Sure. But you're going to have to wait. Yeah, beautiful. There's, there's going to be a Sorry. raffle where it's like, there's only maybe like two or three, like a low number of tickets. It might be a little bit more expensive than, than some yeah. you've seen, but it's going to be worth it. It's yeah. going to be, it's one of the most, uh, the craziest posts we've ever seen. Let's say it's related to that, right? It's, and yeah, I just yeah. hope it it, yeah. it draws a crowd. Freedom Weekend, <laughs> again, is going to be, I keep saying it, this is going to be a Second Amendment rally like no other that we've seen in New York State. We have a machine gun shoot planned. Uh, a lot of people have asked how that's possible. We're, we're a cool. manufacturer. Yeah, we're cool. We're a manufacturer, uh, manufacturers, uh, FFLs in New York State. If you pay your SOT, your special occupation tax, you can deal and manufacture and do whatever you got to do with NFA items, which includes machine guns. So suppressors, machine guns, 
AOWs. We have all those. Uh, we're a little limited because of the mobile range that we have. We can't do, uh, you know, like we've been trying to get a 249 saw, right? right. Like we couldn't shoot that in the range. So uh, we might put that on hold until the rebuild. Right. Why don't we have a full auto 1022? I guess. Oh, that'd like be fun. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. You like, know, I mean, before the fire, this room was supposed to be our stream lab and then our like R&D lab. And I was going to get a couple machines and I was going to set, you know, Joe and some of the guys that know how to do stuff. And I was going to be like, yeah, man, like, just have fun. Like, make one for you. Make one for me. <laughs> you know, like, it's going to stay here. But yeah, do whatever. Yeah. Turn out some suppressors on the lathe. Like, let's experiment. Let's have some fun. Uh, and then obviously the fire happened. And now we went from uh, a 7,500 square foot store to uh, a 500 square foot store. So uh, well, 1022 machine guns are relatively easy to make from what I can't be that hard. Right. Yeah. It can't be that hard. Their magazine works the best, too. Like you're actually going to get yeah, 25 feed rounds reliably through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did they ever make those from the factory full no. or are those all conversions? No, I can't imagine they would have. No, especially Ruger. That's what you yeah, mean. being a Ruger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, fuck you, Bill. Uh, so can we go to the overhead cam one more time, just to hit Freedom Weekend one last time here in the beginning? We've got uh, a lot of stuff planned, and we're very excited. We've got these flyers here that uh, I've got a ton of, and I need your help putting them up. So if you come down, grab five, ten, twenty. I've, I've got a ton. Come down here, grab some flyers, and post them up uh, in your favorite spots. Uh, if you're going to hang them up at a business, I do ask that you like get permission. You know, I mean, if it's one of those public like notice boards where anybody can put stuff up, who cares? Yeah. Right? But, you know, if you're going to tape something up on a business, <laughs> make Have sure you respect, get permission. Please. Uh, you know, telephone poles around town, maybe. I don't know. Places places that would be acceptable to hang stuff like this that you've seen other things hung. Put uh, <laughs> put yours up there. And if you take a picture of you or of where you've put it and you tag us on social media, we're giving away an Aero Precision complete parts kit, lower parts kit, uh, to someone who, uh, I just think I, I like their job the best. So go who ahead. Who doesn't need some spare parts? Yeah, absolutely. A absolutely. Reason to build another gun. That's exactly how I see it. Yeah. You get enough parts together and you're like, Oh, I only need one more part right. to make a whole gun. Yeah. It's awesome. Pretty close. So we've got these flyers expect a lot of stuff pretty much from now until June 10th. All you're going to hear us talking about, I mean, we're, yeah. we're a month away. Right. And dude, a month creeps so quickly. It's a month away. Yeah. I was just talking to a customer about that today. Oh, it's nuts. Did you see I got a new job, by the way? I switched uh I switched careers. Switched teams, huh? Yeah, I switched okay. <laughs> switched teams. Okay. I was waiting for Ty to make some kind of joke with that. But um yeah, I, I have accepted a job at ATF. Uh I've I know everything about all of you, and I'm taking y'all down with me. There basically. You go. No, I'm just kidding. Of course. This is for the dunk tank. We have got a dunk tank coming this Freedom Weekend. We're very excited about, and we are going to have a lot of fun putting our friends in there. I know Dwayne, current athlete, Dwayne, uh, is planning on going in there. He, he's told me he's, I shouldn't. I don't know if I should say. Don't it. say it. No, right. don't say it. Yeah, he's he's here. trying to make a costume, right? That'll be fun. I, I think a few of us are going to be ATF uh, or not, not ATF. AFT. Agents. AFT agents. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that'll be a lot of fun and that'll be for charity for FPC. Uh, same with, I should say the chicken barbecue and the, it's not really a chicken barbecue. Uh, we're actually doing chicken out. If you're familiar yeah. with chicken out, fried chicken, work with them. So a fried chicken raffle dinner. I don't know what you call it. Probably the best uh, chicken you'll have. Oh, it's amazing. It's, it's That's subjective. I guess dive. I, think if you've never had chicken out. You're just wrong. It's, it's very nice. It's very, very good. It's, it's very good. Top tier. And I'm debating. I was going to just get like the normal. Cause I don't know how many people like the heat. Should I get some? Hot. Obviously. I would just, yeah. it's, it's good hot, right? It's good yeah. Hot. That's your yeah. choice. Yeah. Well, that'll be fun. Yeah. Give it a choice. Yeah. You'll have yeah. to give us a like, <laughs> yeah. How would you divvy that up? I guess we can talk about that off stream. We can talk about, I'm yeah, just thinking, we'll, of, thinking out loud, pay an extra two bucks and you can tell me what you want. No. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that's two dollar tip. I keep going on tangents. We had some students in today. We had a student group in yeah, yeah. and we got them to shoot the machine gun. Like yeah. a lot of fun with it and stuff. And they pulled up a picture of the Barrett from the Virginia rally. Sure, sure. And they were like, do you, do you have, you have this? And I was like, yeah, I have it. And I like, I got it out. And they, they you know, they blew their loads. Blew it it was, yeah. It's a lot of fun. It's half the reason we still have that. What does that course. mean? Uh, it's like when your washing machine, when you put too much detergent in there and it, the load just blows out of there. Yeah. You put the wrong uh, kind of detergent in. <laughs> yes. <You put> dog. <laughs> that can happen too. So they were like, can we take some photos with that? And can you pick I, it up I said, of course. Yeah. 
Uh, I was like, yeah, not a problem. So Cam took them out back and they were like laid in the grass out back, like safe direction, of course. They took some posed photos. No. I was like, that's so fun. I love making those memories, right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but as soon as they walked out, I was like, ah, the capitalist in me was like, well, you should have charged him for a picture. Right. The dude that dresses up as fake Spider Man in Hollywood, like he gets five he bucks for a photo. Yeah. yeah. I was like, ah, oh, I can't do that. But I was like, I should have done that. And then, because I hate, to admit, they were they were from another country, from than America, and sure, sure, sure. I don't know exactly where they were from, but you know, tensions maybe, maybe. Uh, you know. So I was like, <laughs> you, I wanted to make them say like, I'm gonna take a video <laughs> of you guys saying that like America's number one. <laughs> get the murder. Pull the like, Ric Flair. Get them suicided in their home oh, countries. Lord. Like Jesus Christ. For legal reasons, I didn't that's a do joke. it. Yeah, I didn't do it, guys. But yeah. I should have, right? I should have. We should. The price is this. <laughs> If you sit there and you record the video, it's cheaper. That sounds worse than yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> right. Now that that left your mouth. <laughs> oh, I got canceled, I think. Did I just get canceled? Yeah, we Cut that, did. cut that, cut that, cut that, cut that. <laughs> so what are you guys been up to? <laughs> <laughs> get, Let's- uh, Getting canceled. Can we do a giveaway? Let's do a giveaway. It's been a while. It's been a very long time. It's been a long time since we've done a giveaway. Um, what do they have to do? But what do they get? Share it? and comment. Uh, sure. Uh, but if you're gonna Follow share us on Spotify, that too. That man, I can't. I don't. I can't see who follows that. But I'll see if it grows. Yeah. Um. But what yeah. They, what are we get? What are we getting? Uh, are share share this. But you have to make you have to make sure your privacy settings are open so I can see who shared it. Um. And uh, I will make an announcement post. You go to the but, overhead cam. Um, yeah. Overhead. Look at this. I took pictures. These. I was going to make a an these. Instagram post on the firing pin about me making one of these. Um, this is Backpackers Pantry, and honestly, we've been obsessing with them at the shop. A little it's too, really a good. little too much. It's really good, especially the um, the price that you're getting. Yeah, these four. This is the two two serving. As a man, I would probably eat like two of these myself, like two packages. It's 580 it's a, calories. It's a good amount. It's it is a good amount. It's definitely <laughs> it's definitely not. <laughs> I would never split this with someone. Like I am a selfish pig. Yeah. Um, but it is technically, it's a two serving pouch. It's 10 bucks, I mean, $9.99. Yeah. <laughs> and out of all of, you know, we've gone through several here. I've been buying these for years. Uh, different, you know, different, the, the wise foods. We'll eat the them for lunch, man. It's yeah. so good. These are, I think the healthiest. None of these are gonna be like good. September 32. Yeah, 2032. Yeah. Year, like good, good, shelf good life. shelf life. Uh, I feel like the, uh, the sodium, you know, some of these you'll get like, over a hundred percent of your daily value. Like this is 63% of your day. If you eat the whole thing, 63% of your daily value of a sodium. Uh, and it doesn't taste. That was my complaint with the wise foods. They uh, taste, they don't they taste all great. salt. These are very phenomenal. Like, like you the, wouldn't the season, mind eating this for lunch. I made one two days ago for lunch. Like usually the guys and I will split one cause right. we, we'll just take little portions. Yeah. And uh, there was a customer here and I just finished making it. And he's a well-known customer. We all like him. And I had him try it and he was like, wow, I did not expect it to taste like like. They're also nice because you just cook food. them in the pouch. Yeah. Right. Some of the wise boil foods, water. I remember you had to, you know, you'd, you'd boil them, but you'd have to boil them in the cooking pot. That's, that's uh -huh. funny. Answer it. it. Should we? The firing pin, you're live on the firing Speaker. pin live stream. How can I help you? <laughs> Well, this is fun. Yeah, this. I'm sure the viewers are. The green button. Right now. I'm overseas out in Syria. Someone gave me a bad news badge. Um, you guys, uh, there was a fire at your guys' uh, range. Yeah, yeah, we had a fire back in March, at the end of March. <laughs> And uh, this is what it, every day it took feels out like. uh, a good I chunk know, of the facility, know, unfortunately. It, it uh, kind of destroyed the range the completely. And uh, <laughs> we've got about half the building torn down right now. Do you think it's going to be? Uh, yeah, we'll be rebuilding her and we'll be back uh, better than ever. So. Oh, okay. Nice. Um, uh, glad everyone is, you know, first, I'm glad everyone's, you know, okay. This is fun. Hurt. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, nobody got hurt. That's the most important thing. And. Uh, yeah, spirits are high and you know, we're, uh, we're doing it. We're, we've got a mobile range we set up here and, uh, we've got a yeah. garage space that we had set up, uh, yeah, two shares. as a retail That's space. Cool. So we're kind of like the, the smallest, coolest gun shop. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, it's only rated for handguns or handgun calibered, you know, firearms, but yeah, you can come down and shoot. Absolutely. 
It's crazy. We've been renting machine guns in the range. Sounds yeah. good. Like, yeah, we'll be here uh, three or four times. Nine till oh, seven tomorrow. That's good. And I, I posted a story on the Firing Pins Instagrams uh, yeah. a couple of days ago, and it was really funny because sounds good. Welcome back home too. All you could just yeah. hear was the full auto. Like, yep. you, it was a UMP forty, yeah. so it was extreme. I don't know if you heard. Like that guy was in Syria. That's, that's cool. Was just like yeah, that's what I. I on live, can you tell us exactly what you were doing in country? No. <laughs> can I like turn this off if I hold the power button sure. for a long time? I think that's how electronics work. Is it how electronics work? Thank Look you. at that, it turned off. Okay. If I just whip it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if I get a lot of smoke and water into it, then it won't work. Oh, Careful, that's me. that's Mother M, man. It is a Motorola, that's kind of funny, isn't it? Yeah. They work well. They it's great. great. It's, it's a big M. They're water resistant. And they live up to that. Like it resisted the water as long as it could, but eventually <laughs> <laughs> it persisted. It was very persistent and the water just bloop, got right in there. That's good times. <laughs> so we took a call live on the air. Yes, we did. We've never done that before. Are we going to get like a complaint from the FCC? Is that allowed? Can we do that? Can you, over the telephone, radio. I think it's fine. I don't know. As long, I think if it were like legitimately, if it were like over a radio, it would probably be an issue, wouldn't it? it would be. I don't know. I mean, I told him you're live on the firing pin yeah. live, so. Yeah, one party can That's sign. on him. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> New York, baby. <laughs> one of Ty's favorite things, one party can sign. <laughs> For legal reasons, uh, once again, that's a joke. Oh <laughs> <laughs> My mom and grandma watch this, man. Yeah, oh so. <laughs> I don't need their consent. I can record whatever I want. <laughs> Jamma. Jamma. Turn off your phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Do we have any questions? Are people watching this? Uh, hardly. No, yeah, they dropped out. No, they're done. <laughs> We're, you took the call and we went to like two people. They were, okay. we're dead, dude. Oh, we're we're so dead in the water. Sad. Sad. It's, it's over. Not. All right. Do you well, like how I put the poster over his crotch? <laughs> it's kind of suggestive, right? Like sex sells, bro. Like, <laughs> what are you going to do? I didn't connect that until you brought it up. <laughs> Obviously, I put one on top of the yoked. <laughs> Supposedly, that's the like the former director of the who went like ICE or whoever, like Immigration and Customs, like whoever's whoever's OG target that is. Mm -hmm. That was supposed to be like that was like their old director or whatever, or like <laughs> the awesome. current the current. I can like, see it. That looks yeah, like yeah. every agent from Fed. the fifties, yeah, yeah. right? Hey, like just post mob era agencies I, I know we call him harry knuckles is that like his actual name yeah i like, feel like that i've said that on the target yeah. i don't know i know that's what we wrote i've said harry knuckles to people and yeah, i think no they way. understand what i'm talking the about some talking people about? call it harry knuckles some people call it the ronald reagan target because he looks mm. a little bit like ronald reagan i could huh. see that <laughs> i can see that try that qr code see if that qr code works Boop. i can't that's like the weatherman i can't find it there it is Boop. that one scan it do it does Can't, it work? But they're yeah, no. but they might be on their phones watching. Oh shit. Get another phone. <laughs> <laughs> Buy another phone so you can watch our stream. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can we take a question? Yo, please. Yo, please, please, uh, God. please oh, God. God. We don't have any. Hi God. Stuff. It's me, Brandon. <laughs> Jonathan is about to get that grill going and beer's cracked. I will, Good for you. I will drink to that social. Hell yeah. What are you making us on the grill? I'm down. Yeah. Also, Burgers, I, saw, I saw that that was Jonathan. What's up, man? How's it going? Uh, Pat looks like you've got something brewing. Brewing. Br brewing. Brewing. I, yeah, I got a brewing. we got a skirmish coming up on the 28th and, um, you know, really hoping that this one does well um, for those. Oh, skir I keep saying skirmish. Tactical games training day. It's training day. Proper terminology. So if you don't know how. how to do the tactical games, this will teach you how to do the tactical games. Correct. Right. If you're thinking about, you know, getting involved in any sort of competitive shooting, first of all, there's many different disciplines that you could pursue as far as competitive shooting is concerned, right? Um, there's obviously a lot of stuff you can do with your shotgun sure. in terms of trap yeah. or skeet or IDPA or USPSA. Well, yeah. Or for, so for you could go. Sorry. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's, you know, different there's stuff you could do in that yeah. regard. Uh, definitely with the handguns, yeah, IDPA or USPSA would be like our most common ones, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then also there's the tactical games. And mm -hmm. the tactical games is sort of like a two-gun match, mm -hmm. um, but in conjunction with various fitness elements, right? It, so, is, it is the closest to, like if you watch, say, in-range TV or Forgotten Weapons, they do those two-gun action challenge matches. Yes. Very similar idea where... 
uh, not to interrupt. I'm sorry. No, but, you know, my, my, from my, you know, my critique of say IDPA or USPSA is, I, and it, part of it could be because those are older and maybe they've just developed, you know, over the 20 or 30 years they've been around to get to this stage. But that's very much on the, on like the gamer side uh, of, of firearms. And it's not a derogatory statement, but it's just very, you know, you have to get your draw times down to under a second or at a second. Say. You, you have to. In order to progress in the sport. If right? you actually want to be competitive, if you want to, you know, place or, yeah, you, you have to hone certain things. And not that that's not true for tactical games, but I would say, like, your split times are less important. Or, you know, like, if, if you don't get your reloads down to, you know, that elite level. Right. You know, like, that's not where you're going to lose the game. That's know? what like, that's what I have kind been. of it's, it's, I would say it's more fair. But that's kind of the only word I can think of to like it's more even maybe. I don't know. I don't know the like. Well, and that's not really fair either, because if you're super yoked or if you're super, you know what I mean? Like, I don't if you're know, really like, fit individual yeah. then you're going to obviously have an advantage in a lot of regards. What? Um, can. Right. Oh, yeah. He's got a lot of advantages. So ultimately, <laughs> the tactical games uh, and the training days. Right. It is a shooting event. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's mm-hmm. what's going to probably win or lose, I would say, in general, is going to be who's the best shooter. However, there's a fitness component Mm -hmm. as well, Mm -hmm. and that's going to play a big role in whether or not you can perform when it's time to do the shooting portion because you don't always start shooting first. Sometimes you'll have, you know, a little section where you'll shoot, and then you'll have some work to do, and then you'll have to go back and shoot Again, but this time around, maybe you're starting to feel a little bit more fatigue, right? Or your heart rate is up. So yeah, like sweat is stinging your eyes. The training day events are—I don't want to say scaled back, but at a, oh, at, a, at, a yeah. at a battle, you might have a three-mile run. Is that a, is that not the question? Uncommon. Five, not unco- maybe five, five is yeah, yeah, yeah within yeah. the realm of possibility. Um, and you may see, you know, as an example in uh, like. I compete in the intermediate division typically. Mm-hmm. Um, 150, san- 150 pound sandbag sure. is not outside sure. the realm of possibility. And uh, again, one of the nice things that they've done, and, I, and you could do this, I'm sure, at an IDPA or USPSA match as well. Like if you just want to go there to have fun and you don't care how you place on the leaderboard, we're having a different discussion. Sure. But you can do the same with the tactical game stuff. If, if you're not trying to get on the podium, you're just trying to do a shakedown of your gear. Right. You don't have to do the five mile run, right? Like you yeah. can just eat the... I mean, I mean you, you depends on your division, right? If sure, you're of course. Elite, if right, you're in the elite course. division, like, that's a different story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those guys are there to compete. Of course. Like, right, right, right. But like you could you, you could do a lower division. And you might not go to a battle, but definitely say the training days. Right. You're not gonna do a five mile run for those. You might no, no, do no, no, a, no, a half we, mile run. Yeah, we're, it's, we're, it's more focused on the other side of it, getting the gear up to speed or getting you it's outfitted the, it's and the getting the teaching you, of yeah, like, you know, various component skills, I guess. Uh, positional shooting is a is a big mm-hmm. one, right? Mm-hmm. Um, holdovers, offsets, rifle yep. to handgun transitions, yep. um, p- potentially support side shooting, or uh, especially with the handgun, like strong side only shooting or mm-hmm. support side mm-hmm. only shooting. All of those sorts of things are things that we will go over. And it's, it's definitely stuff that I think on your own, most people wouldn't train that way. Or wouldn't, um, or you know, they wouldn't unless they had this goal in mind, maybe to do one of these events. Or There's just a lot of realize that sure all that's of a thing. those things are right. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't or like recognize a VTAC barrier. We're right. going to be able to go locally, anyways, to like set one of those up and run that drill yeah. on your own. Like yeah. we're, we're lucky we had Polar Wave, but we got to come up with something for that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully here. Yeah, I'm hopefully, saying like here we got to come with something. Yeah. Like Absolutely, that. we do because that's a it, the, you know. The average guy, I mean, yes, if you're lucky, you'd have some tools. You could build one of those in your backyard, maybe, and you could right. do some dry fire practice, with, you know, at least sure. get those positions down, how I'm going to transition, how I'm going to hold my sling, whatever. But right. uh, then to go to, to shoot and actually make hits, totally another thing. You know? Oh, for sure. So. And a lot of times you can spend, the thing that I find is people that that are, let's say they're they're self-taught, right? So they're they're working on these concepts and they're trying to learn how to shoot from the kneeling, various kneeling positions, mm-hmm. right? Well, there's a lot of nuanced little stuff that goes into that, like which knee is off the ground and which knee is on the ground. Yeah. Because that's going to indicate, that's going to uh, differentiate how supported is the rifle. You know what I'm saying? You, get, you guys have all heard me talk about like, hey, 
when I'm in this kneeling position, I want to make sure that I get as much of my body connected yeah. to the gun as possible, right? And that the gun is as supported as possible, right? That's so, why I love the nine hole drill. Yeah, it forces you into some compromised positions. It's one and of my you've favorites. Never done it before, then you know, really interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, Those we bottom that, holes, man. We ran into that at the last uh, training day where people were shooting like LPVOs and stuff, and they're trying to get into those positions to do like rollover prone or or whatever. And you know, I would let them, I would let them fight with it for a minute or two, and then I would like stop them and say, "Hey, why don't we try this?" Yeah, and it's like to show them another little element you don't know what you don't know didn't think of, right yeah that time we were doing it for time uh a few weeks ago that was really fun uh and we've gotten kind of aggressive not aggressive but a polar wave if um like your foot goes outside the barrier like one of us like taps your foot because you're supposed to be confined within in the the boundaries that's part of it so that's right. one of the things that i always stress with that drill yeah. is like hey your foot's out forming to the terrain this is what we have like if you're behind a car correct you this know is, this is your your cover, your concealment, right? So you got to work within the confines of whatever. So you got to make your position match that. Absolutely. I love it. Uh, I love it. So Jonathan res the, responded, he's making jer uh, Jamaican jerk chicken sausage. Ooh. And that sounds amazing. I heard something about a sausage party or I read something yeah. about a sausage party. I've been to those before. I'd go again. <laughs> <laughs> I'd go, wait. It was like we have training. one right now. It was the Actually, training for this. We're, for the we're literally having yeah. a sausage. <laughs> <laughs> they're grilling out back. Oh my gosh! Uh, Jamaica. I haven't had jerk chicken in so long since you've been to People's Choice. Yeah, right? it's been, and it's been a while since I've been to People's Choice. Yeah. Speaking of People's Choice, they should be shooting with him yeah. tomorrow. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Eej. Nice, mm -hmm. cool. Eej. <laughs> uh Shane asks, what do we think of the Platypus 1911 by Stealth Arms? Josiah, you had written out this whole thing. I don't really have a mic to get to you. Um, TLDR. It's pretty neat. <laughs> All right. Good. It looks, it Next question. Good. <laughs> it's I don't pretty know neat. much about it personally. Have you heard of it? I've, I've seen pictures of it on the internet, and I... I understand that it's a 1911 pattern pistol that so, accepts Glock magazines. That's cool. Oh, okay. Is that is that the thing? Or is that 2011. The, I'm sorry. 2011. Style, is that the really. is that the ruse? Yeah. That's Who's like, Stealth Arms? Who are they? Do they have a history of making anything else? I've never heard of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I yeah. I'm not super familiar with who they are and what they. It's do. not a bad thing. There's just there's a lot of companies that make. I'll take anything innovative. Even if it doesn't things. work, it's just yeah. I love that there's still innovation in the industry. Mm -hmm. I think it's yeah. I think it's cool that people are trying new stuff and. Anything Speaking. that supports Glock mags is like, yeah, I'm it's surprised it took this long. Yeah. As far as like magazine availability. Right. But yeah. Glock is like I think we talked about this pretty recently, like Glock Last magazines week. are plastic. Right. And in the final analysis, metal mags are superior, but they're also more expensive to make. They're more expensive to to get. You know, they're harder to get in a lot of cases. So I think Glock mags are out there. They're yeah. plentiful. And uh, diamond, like diamond dozen, it feels like. Yeah. It is interesting. Uh, are cool. I would love to see. Maybe they've done it some year for April Fools. I'd love to see like Wilson Combat make a Glock mag. Right. It's like eighty five dollars, but I just want to see it. <laughs> All metal, polished internals. Wilson like, Combat. Yeah, logo I want to see it. it. I want to see it. That I would be cool. all about it. I mean, the Glock mag has metal in it, but I know what you mean. Like, you've it's seen mostly plastic. You've like, seen the Wilson Combat Glocks, right? Like the the one that they made for Paul Howe of CSAT and the one that they made oh, for cool. Larry Vickers. That's um, cool. Yeah, but I don't have two thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, some of those guns get so expensive. Oh, I, I don't have two grand for a Glock. I'm sorry, I don't. I have a grand for a Glock. I don't too. Um, it's it's Nighthawk, the night that make the 1911, right? The like super expensive one. They make, they make a yeah. version of the uh, when we were Abbott at Shot Show. Makes one. Mm -hmm. and, I think um, Nighthawk is one of those that's like when you when you buy one of those, you have maxed out the like you are getting what you're paying for and you're not just paying for fluff or like yeah. bougie, whatever. Like, you know, it's not. Sure. Yeah. Right. When uh, we were at chat show, we went to the Nighthawk uh, booth mm -hmm. and the owner was definitely there. Um, just looked like this dude in Mr. his Hawk. 60s, 70s and like just 
balled out. You know he drives a Rolls Royce. Like he just <laughs> like that energy. It was just cool. Yeah. I'm like that's definitely the owner. Uh, I don't know. Those guns, Nighthawk 1911s, are about as cool as a handgun can get. Without. They're sexy, man. Yeah. Because they're all hand. I mean, everything. Is oh, it's incredible. The yeah. slide is so. Smooth There's no absolutely like, no slop. Yeah. Absolutely no. Like, it's just yeah. you, you know you do know exactly what you're paying for when you pay that mm-hmm. kind of money. Even if it's five thousand. <laughs> but yeah, it's still it's still forty five hundred dollars or whatever it is. Yeah, there's one for. Yeah, what's like a base model over there go for like twenty five to thirty five hundred? I would guess. Uh, I'm not really seeing anything other than four. Oh, I guess there's some upgrade kits for six fifty, uh, three thousand five hundred. <sighs> so yeah, about so they up there. I don't see anything cheaper than three thousand five hundred. Well, I see it nine thousand. But I, I mean, for three grand, I would, I would pay that, and I would carry that gun if I, oh, if shit, I had that yeah. kind of money for a gun. This I is a this is a Turnbull. This is a nine thousand dollar one. Defi- yeah. That's definitely Turnbull case hardening. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Speaking of this kind of stuff, I don't know why um, I, I thought of it. I didn't get a chance. It wasn't here last week. Uh, I want to just thank everyone who bid, either you just bid on stuff, or certainly anyone who bought anything from the auction that we had, the Bontrager auction, that was uh, uh, very good to us. Right. It has been uh, extremely helpful in this time. I mean, it's been tough. I think uh, across the board, sales have been kind of down in our industry. I've been a lot of other dealer groups and stuff, and people have said, you know, I mean, it happens every year coming into this time of the year. It's the summer. Retail in general Tax season just finished. Yeah, like, you know, people have vacations they want to take and lawns to pay for and stuff and whatever. So, uh, but... It has been tough for us. Obviously, I'm, I'm not trying to get a, a pity party going or anything, but uh, the auction came at a very good time. I'll just say that. Yeah. And uh, things worked out very well for us. We got pretty much what we were hoping to get, uh, and it just allowed us to unload a ton. We had a lot. We had like three or 400 items, I want to say. Uh, well, more than that. We had at least 300 guns, and then we had a ton of other items, too. Right, so right. it was just nice to offload all of that, kind of start fresh you know, get us to uh, a spot. Cause you know, a lot of stuff, you know, the story you buy something on 30 day terms or 60 day terms, you know, it's so, like there was stuff that we had bought, you know, say we bought like 10 grand worth of stuff the day before the fire, like, you know, the distributor's like, Oh, that's sucks, man. But yeah, you know, I need my money. You know Still what I mean? So it's paid, like, yeah, right. F you pay me as they say. Uh, so some of our distributors, I got a shout out to Kevin Bach, uh, and some of our other distributors, <laughs> they extended those terms. They really helped us out a ton. I couldn't, couldn't do it without them. But uh, yeah, uh, that was nice. And uh, a lot of people have been asking how they could help. I'm sure most of the people that are sticking with us 40 minutes into the stream are already supporters in some way or another. But we do have memberships available on our uh, website for the range. The range is open. We do have a mobile shooting range that's handgun caliber rated. So uh, you you can take advantage of your membership. We we will be memorializing all the members Mm -hmm. that stick with us when we reopen. Uh, in the new range and in the store, we're gonna put up a really nice bloody handprint with everybody. <laughs> Jesus Christ, we're gonna put up a really nice plaque with everybody, uh, with everybody's name on it and stuff. And uh, the the memberships have really just been helping keep the lights on, keep the guys paid, and uh, again helping us helping us fight through this. Um, I don't have a huge update really to give as far as where we stand. Although if you've come down lately, you've you've seen the state of the building. She's she's kind of cutting cutting cut in half. Uh, please, please don't go into the former part of the building. I put some signs up saying I have to stop people from walking construction in. zone. People yeah. walk in there and be like, people have been walking in. I know he was our buddy, but we had a, people yeah. just walked right in like the employee entrance kind of, I guess. But uh, yeah, we've started the demolition process. We're working with uh, Thompson builds, which is a great local company. Uh, Jake and the whole team, Madison and, Paul Thompson and all of them over there are amazing. And they've, they've, they've built some truly amazing projects locally. Like to see them, Agreed. to see their growth too, has been really cool. Right. Uh, Same it, with it, all the Virgin, like triple. Oh, o, dude, Virgin, Virgin Liberty has, pumps. yeah, yeah. That whole, I mean, originally we were going to go over to where Liberty pumps is like, that was our original, not the original, original spot, but when we first came to Virgin. That's where we wanted to go because of the, 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 you know, traffic going by and whatever the visibility ended up being too expensive. 
uh, for us. I'm very glad we came over here. This has been a great, great spot for us. But yeah. that land over there, there was Liberty Pumps and like Leonard Bus and like one other small company back there. And now it's huge. There's almost no land left over there. But uh, yeah, we have been working. We've got some uh, some preliminary designs drawn up. I, I can't really get into any of the details, but we are diligently working on a rebuild and we will be back better than ever. Um, my, my hope in this is that we can come out of this with the ability. I don't, I, I really don't know if we'll be able to have another range open. I, I will admit it, some of that depends on all of you at home. Uh, I, I, I'm not one to normally like ask for that kind of stuff, but I think we're going to do like a Kickstarter or some type of, um, crowdfunding yeah. where I think we'll have enough to put the foundation in and the shell of not only the range. I mean, the range that we had, we're going to rebuild seven lanes, right? 25 yards. We really can't increase the distance any with the, right now at, the, at this time. But I mean, there were plenty of times you'd be in here. Seven lanes were completely full three to four people per lane. I mean, it was packed in there. Uh, I'm really hoping we can add another, 10 lane maybe range to, to really increase our capacity. So I, I think with the rebuild, the numbers are coming in in such a way where we could, you know, pour the concrete, have it there, but I don't think we'll have enough to, to build it out, you know, but if we do a Kickstarter, if we could do a Kickstarter, I think we could put a goal out there and, and we could put some really cool like membership, you know, you yeah, get, you get a membership of t-shirts and, and you know, like we, a Kickstarter does, yeah. you know, there's a, but for those of the people that know what a Kickstarter is. Oh, sure. Please. Yeah. yeah. I don't, like, you, you're, you do more Kickstarters you know, the, than me. There would so. be like, I've done them for these books up here behind us, you know, so there, there might be, um, there might be levels where you get up enough where you could name a lane. You know, we have local businesses that might pay enough to name a certain lane after them, if the marketing on it, or, uh, we've had, uh, Loyal patrons, unfortunately, pass away and we've had people want to do like a dedicated, you know, thing for them. That's a possibility. Mm -hmm. um, or, or yeah, just, hey, 10 bucks, here's a sticker. You know what I mean? Like there's any level of, of support you could give. So I'd like to do something like that. Get, the more we can add on to. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. The better we can make it, you know. Um, you know, we've gotten some quotes uh, to have companies come in and do the range. And it's, you know, like the budget that we'd spend on like half the building could go just into the <laughs> just range. Into the range. It, it's yeah. crazy what you can spend on stuff like that. Stuff you could so spend crazy. a lot, but we could have a really nice range. And that's, that. that's what we would hope, you Having know, Having the ability to shoot in more yeah. than one direction would be, I know a question has been asked if we're going to do the rubber backstop again. Right. Right. I do think we will uh, again, just because of the economics of it, you know, that's, the insurance company is going to replace what we had or pay us the value of, of what we had to replace. Right. And, uh, if we go with a, like a steel backstop, a snail type, they're like two to $300,000 more, not two to $300,000, two to $300,000 extra to go on. And we just, I don't think we can swing that. Um, you know, what happened? I don't know how the fire started. I don't know if we ever will, but once the fire started in the backstop, being that chipped up rubber tires, once those get going, it's hard to put them out. Well, the construction of the building that we had was wooden trusses. So once one truss goes and the next one and the next and the next and the next, and it spread through the whole building uh, with the redesign, everything will be metal. So, you know, if God forbid the backstop caught again, the backstop might burn a lot. We might, you know, melt a few beams or something like, well, jet fuel, yeah. not still beams, but it's not jet know, fuel, it's rubber. right. Rubber certainly is weaker than jet fuel. Right. So, I assume so. uh, I assume so too. God damn. We just got canceled so hard on that, <laughs> but, uh, you know, hopefully it would be contained. And then to double down on that, the new building because of new code requirements is going to have to have a sprinkler system installed. So it would certainly, if it happened again, uh, we would get smothered be able to soon, smother yeah. that out. Yeah. 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 So, uh, that's just to answer some of the questions that we've been getting about a lot know, of questions. The remodel and, uh, trust me, this is something that, uh, that every day, you know, I, I'm just extremely thankful that I've got a team that, you know, I, I've pretty much told you, I've pretty much told you guys like, Hey, you need to run the store, like the business side of it. And I, I'm just trying to get this place back up and running. Like that's where, that's where my focus has been is talking to vendors. We're talking about going down to Philadelphia to check out, um, a few different ranges to see their designs and stuff to try to, you know, steal what designs we can and, sure. and ideas and whatever to make ours better. And, um, yeah, 
we're we're really trying to come to come back one as soon as we can, you yeah. know, because this sucks. I mean, I hate I mean, this garage is awesome. I'm glad we had it. But to go again from a 7500 square foot store uh, to 500 square feet, it sucks. It sucks. You you guys deserve better, our customers. And, um, you know, again, it, it stinks not having a full range like we want where we can only shoot. We can only shoot handguns right now or handgun calibers. Right. We do, though. We should say we have a pretty good rental fleet. We do have a back up. Rental fleet. You want to go over it? Um, I'm going to put you in the spot. Yeah. So let me just pull up the post where I announced the rental fleet because I off the top of my head, I'm drawing a big blank. Uh so we just got the new uh, POF Tombstone, which is the lever gun, it's a nine, nine mil, mil. It's magazine cool. fed. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. What what mags? Uh, proprietary. Uh, they're POF. <laughs> Unfortunately, I I really want to see a Gen two with this with yeah. block mags or an um, adapter of some. Yeah, it would be, be cool if they made it a takedown. That gun is cool. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know. We'll see how it holds up. Uh, yeah, actually, see Josiah, you're so cool. Yeah, I haven't actually seen one of these in person yet. I just love how lever guns are becoming more modern. It does look like. I don't yeah, know, but though. that mag release is stupid. Look where it is. Way over here. Like, I literally have to take my support hand. and is it, It's ambi though, right? Yeah, it's got the mag release there, but that's the only way I can access it from a natural shooting grip. Right? It's kind of like an MP5 mag, too. I don't know if they'd be able to make an adapter. No. And again, Easily. this is Gen 1. Sure. They are definitely cool. I think it's going to be a popular rental. It has a little magnet right here. So that'll stay closed. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's I, cool. I like POF. I think the build quality on their stuff is always really good. They're extremely expensive. What's retail? Um, uh, like 18. Yeah. I want to say. I like the monolithic design. It's got here the big uh, the, hammer spur. Which yeah. is. Okay. Go string sights. I, I love. Trigger. I love the first iteration of this. I want to see what they do next. Um, it's got a very good trigger. Yeah. It's a Magpul stock, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? I was going to say, I figured it wasn't uh, proprietary. That is a cool It definitely, uh, from what I've heard from the guys that have shot it, you definitely need to just, like, run it. You, you can't, like, baby it, kind of. Um, you, you need to, yeah, just run it. And it seems to run, right, when you do so. It'll chug right along, I'm sure. And I wonder, is that because nine mil for a lever gun is pretty short? You know, usually a lever gun will have a longer sure. cartridge length. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a 38 special or a 3030 or anything. Yeah, that's like a, that. just a really short bolt travel, too. You know what I mean? I, I was cool. just gonna say too, like, yeah, it just it doesn't I don't wanna talk crap about it. It doesn't sound like how I want it to sound. Right. Yeah, it sounds it's losing very, that lever. But again, if you're going to modernize this, you don't really want everything to be super loud. But just that, just the sound of a lever opening mm -hmm. and closing, it gets my American <laughs> heritage all giddy. Uh, I do like the two chamber break on it. I'm surprised the barrel is as thick as it is. The barrel seems heavy. The it barrel. is heavy, but it's fluted. Heavy. So true. It just it's, makes it it's, more. Does that even matter for a nine mil? Really? The two chamber break. Yeah. Uh, with a lever gun. I don't think I mean, it's going to help with recoil that much because you're not going full Especially with out of it. A rifle. Yeah. And, it's so it does seem like got four points of contact and whatever. So notes for POF. Um, ditch the Magpul stock because that's expensive. I would say so you can take any 870 stock, I would assume. Right. Maybe not. Yeah. Also, the I would go with a uh, pencil barrel. No, no fluting and just thread, <laughs> thread the end of it and sell it for like 500 bucks cheaper. Yeah, it should definitely be. If that was just, just over a grand, like if, if you get these at like twelve hundred bucks, I think they'd sell a lot oh, more yeah. of them. Oh yeah, that's just a hard. Take a look at it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 Do we have the FPC too? Should we bring that one up? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Did we talk about look that at, last week? Look or at no? this kid. He already has it in hand. I, I thought I saw him grab job. it. It is. Um, I will admit, it's very light. It's lighter than it's I very thought. Light. Right. It's lighter than I thought it would be. I love this thing. So it's a Caltech sub two thousand essentially. But good. but good. It's cleared, but I didn't check your action. How do you? Where's the? Phone? Right here. Take like a charging in. Oh, okay. That's unique. Yeah, we don't see that. Too much is pretty PCC. nice on this. It, the only thing I don't like here. about this is it feels cheap. Like I'm gonna drop that. Or... Well, I'm sure somebody will come out with a high speed aluminum one. I really like the the mags in the stock. 
I yeah. thought it looked goofy. I, I mean, it still does look swords. goofy, but I, I like it. Getting that other mag I hear is really difficult. Um, getting the first mag closest closest to you is nice, but how do you lift? What? I don't know. I haven't played with it that much. Right here. Lift it. <laughs> why am I? Why we're am I dumb, dead. Joe? We're already dead. Yeah, we're dumb. Oh. It, don't love yeah. it. Don't love it. Mm -mm. <laughs> no. I get that. But if I had to run from a bear and yeah. do a, a no. sure, right? That I, that could go away. I want to see this in five seven. I like yes. the, I like the thinner barrel though. Super right. thin and that's, threaded. And that's that's what I was talking about. Like when when I saw this and then I see the POF and it's just why would they go with such a chonk barrel and then that thing with again, the suppressor. From a from a manufacturing standpoint, how much does fluting add to the cost? Gotta, yeah, just to save some. Weight. I don't want to say double the price, but yeah, just do a pencil barrel. I'll check this thing. It's okay. I really like how it folds. Yeah, um, the folds neat. I think I don't know if I like Keltex fold or that fold more. I'm, I'm in. I, I'm kind of in between. I'm still. I hate to say, I'm still just of the opinion that like a nine mil carbine isn't enough. It's just if I'm gonna have a carbine, I want more than a nine mil. And it's just, okay. For fun, I mean, for fun, who cares, right? For fun. But I think if you're if you're, you know, if this is a truck gun or a survival gun or any of those things, I just I don't know. I'm probably wrong, but in my head, if I'm gonna do it, yeah, I want something with just a little, like five seven or something where you're, you've got a rifle now, you've got a sixteen inch barrel. I mean, nine mil is not a slouch out of a rifle barrel, but just ten mil. But if we're talking there you about go. ten mil would be great. But here's the problem: if we're talking about a survival, they make gun, a Smith right? and Wesson. I'm listening. Yeah. What What do I really need with a survival gun? Right. Like survive. ultimately, I need to be able to hunt things. Sure. And there's not a whole lot of stuff I can hunt with a nine mil. I, right. I mean, like you from could, a legal perspective, you could take a deer with one, but I would really would be you? I would be like, really hesitant. That is a survival situation. It would be like, like completely dependent on the shot, right? Like, right. Right. If If it was a bad shot. Yeah. Right, it would have to be like the shot for for me to take it. Well, people trying to take your beans, right? That's different. Well, and then you still got magazine compatibility if you run an MMP. Yeah, so that's cool. Uh, and ammunition compatibility is good. Oh, it is you cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A nine millimeter pistol. That was a cool bag. So, I think there's some advantages Does there, it? but oh, okay. Very gray. I'm trying to get Savior in here. Yeah, um, that'd be cool. With their guitar cases and shit. They I don't know if we don't have the space for those, but we're going to get some of their like softer cases. They make great stuff. Um, We've got some questions that I... Oh, I've got other rentals, but we can talk about that later. TLDR, we have a lot of rentals. Come down, try them. They're mostly nines, but I love you and we need you to rent them. Um, there's a 40. What's on 40? Oh, the UMP. Yeah, the, the UMP, yeah. Um, <clears throat> So this one talks about, uh, I heard there was a nasty lady at a baseball game that got some karma. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is this yeah. a story we shouldn't talk about on it? It's, it's not important. Somebody was, <laughs> somebody was at a baseball game and they made some commentary while my son was pitching. Uh, and like, you know, you're not supposed to be talking about players or two players. Especially kids. At, well, you know, yeah, at a high school baseball game, like it was in bad, t it was in bad taste. So, um, April like made a little Facebook post. She didn't call out the lady's name or anything like that, but it turns out we know some of the same like people or whatever. So, <laughs> I love great. the Kimball drama. It's great. It's great. <laughs> oh yeah, that's always some crazy. Shit. This cra week. was it for um, John. Yeah. Yeah, like that, that's crazy. I mean, okay, I know he's three steps away from being just a man, but like, and MLB. Still high, he's MLB. A it's still a high school game. He's like, 18. Right. But yeah, she, he's, like, he's up there pitching and like, she's What'd literally say? yelling like, uh, he has no arm, <laughs> which like, go pitch. <laughs> I want to see, I want to see you go pitch. Did he like, almost, did he, did he, or didn't he almost pitch a no hitter? He, he's pitched multiple. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> he definitely has an arm, <laughs> but she also said like, he had no confidence. And she was talking, of course, to her player. Of course, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Who immediately got struck out, which Ooh. I thought was funny. But again, these are kids. But they yeah. are, yeah. Like, and <laughs> you don't need to. I don't know. It's just, like, just pump up your own kid. Don't take right. digs. Like, at my I kid. don't. Yeah. I don't sit there and like these these guys suck. Right. Or whatever, right? This like, batter like, sucks. Yeah, don't worry about it, Sean. Yeah. yeah. I, I try not to get into any of that shit. But. Bring it in, guys. 
Bring it in. Yeah. What are some baseball? No hitter. No hitter. Yeah. Easy out here, guys. Let's go. I never, never played a baseball. No? Never. I, I love watching my kids play ball. And I'm playing softball now in an adult league. So, like, it was I, a good weekend last weekend. For- I'll have to make that joke later. I played a lot of Tritown baseball as a kid. But I was never. I'm not an athlete like Dwayne. Let me guess. Not- catcher? <laughs> I'm like later in life. No, third base, third base, which is usually about as far as I get. Yeah, but. I was going to say. <laughs> uh, Social. But I'll <laughs> drink to that. Yeah. Never have I ever. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, I like the idea of baseball. I'm not a sports guy, but man, do I love just like there are nights in the summer where I drive my family nuts because I'm just like, we're going to a Red Wings game. Like, we're right. just going. I'm just, tonight is the night. Like, I don't know who they're playing. Don't care. I want a hot dog. I just want to sit here, a crack of the bat, and just baseball do, do scares me to watch. There's something about, huh? Baseball scares me to watch. What do you mean? I, There's an element of danger. You I am get hit by so a ball. accident prone. I yeah. am, I have to be like, oh my Concussed. God, where's the ball coming? Fucking. I'm, I'm so well, afraid titanium. to get hit in the face. But like, that's titanium. exactly it, bro. How many more hits to the head can I have? Titanium. Just Let's like, find out. Let's go to a baseball game. <laughs> Let's, Let's find, find out. One. Let's go to a two. baseball game. Titanium, though. I thought Give like. the world. Can't you just like. Like, you'll, your body will sense the danger, like just before it gets to you. And you're just like. <laughs> and like an energy wave will come out. And like. <laughs> you guys have seen uh, <laughs> National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, right? Oh, yeah. I'm an yeah. American. Classic, right? Big time. So, this conversation reminds me of cousin Eddie. Yeah. He's like, there's nothing between my brain and the ground but a piece of government plan. Well, <laughs> that's awesome. The table. Yeah, that was Sorry. bizarre. Don't do that again. Um, do that. <laughs> but now there's like bone meshed with the the, the type like it's even stronger. Ooh. So, so it actually like hurts. Like, now now it like hurts. Wait, really? Ooh, you're becoming yeah. you feel it? You're becoming a cyborg? No, like if it gets hit or like Oh, okay. Not don't, that I get hit in the head often. Yeah, don't do but, that. Could you put like what an M1 Abrams tank has, like the reactive armor, where it like, as something gets, it's just like a claymore that detonates <laughs> in your skull. I can once. You can once. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's great. Um, Do, are there people still watching and have they said anything? Yes. I feel like we Sorry. haven't. Uh, <laughs> they're like my Sims. I don't think to check on them. <laughs> Starving. They're all we have dead. 10 to 10 dogs. They're all somewhere. dead. <laughs> Nine for to 10 dogs. <laughs> Uh, Michael asks, any news on how to acquire a semi-auto permit for people that don't already have a pistol? Go to your clerk's office and apply just like you would for a pistol permit. It's and you may as well. The same process. It is exactly the same process other than you don't need to take the full 18-hour training class. So that would that would be the one. Re- I, I would never suggest just getting the rifle permit. Like, you may as well get the full pistol permit because it's both. Um, but you've got to take the 18 hour class. So and then you're playing a you much gotta, longer waiting game. You, you, you got to pay 400 bucks at least, you know, at least with us, we're one of the cheapest ones. Some places charge 575 for it. Um, you know, some places are less. I don't think it's worth skimping out on something like yeah. training that you're going to defend your life on taking legal advice from people, you know, uh, and not for nothing. Ours includes two free lunches. So can't beat that. Uh, and I don't know that I would just get your full pistol permit at that I, point. I can't imagine that the process, like once you turn the application in, they're going to go in the same pile as the rest of them. So like the, the references calls and meeting with the judge and all that kind of stuff, that's going to happen the same. You're not going to get it quicker. Like, I don't think it's quicker to get a rifle permit than it is a pistol permit. Really? I don't think so. I don't think so. And in Genesee County, remember the class you used to have to take, you used to, have to take like a four hour class. I do. That's what you have to take to get your rifle permit. Now, I don't know if that's true in every county, excuse me, but in Genesee County, you have to still take, so you're still taking a class that right now no one's teaching. Who would right. teach that class? Like, no one, everyone's teaching the 18-hour course. I think so. Escarpment Arms does a semi-auto pistol course. Do they? Yeah, yeah that's cool. They're one of the few places that I know. And they, they do a lot because, like, Erie and Niagara County, they have different requirements, too, or they have different whatevers. So they're they're mean? super tight in there. Obviously, Joel, Joe over there is... Uh, on that committee yep. for Niagara County, which is yeah, super those cool. Guys are, those guys are really switched. I don't, on. I don't know of other counties that have a similar committee, but Niagara County has a like second committee amendment. on second amendment. Like how, how does Niagara County protect and defend the second amendment for its citizens so as cool. a county? Yeah. And they've like, they were the first ones to resist that new law that the ones, all the laws that came out, they like 
There was a big thing about the SAFE Act and all those counties passed resolutions. How do we form something like that here? We have to. We really have to. We have to well, start getting involved. To, it has county to come from the county legislature yeah. and it has to come from the sheriff's office too. That's one of the reasons why that other guy you, was running for uh, sheriff. Because, sure. Because like that's one of the few ways at the local level that you can actually like yeah. block the federal government. Or he can just approve every pistol from like instantly. Correct. No waiting there's, times. Yeah, there's a lot of... A lot of power that comes from. Are they the a felon? Nope. Sheriff. Approved. Cool. Yeah. Like that's how it should be. So it's fucking bullshit. I mean, so yeah, I would felony. say that for people that support us and that are into Second Amendment type issues, if they're ever wondering like what they can actually do to get involved, getting involved in the local government would be like yeah. a significant it's a big one. If you want it, like that's significant so much. step. I mean, it's a huge commitment. I would never withstand the scrutiny of people like digging into my personal life <laughs> just that photo of you with your abs with oh my god <laughs> that that in and of itself would get that's me. just enough so i'm, I'm skipping Dumb, a, i'm skipping ahead a little bit because this question is relevant sorry i try to answer questions in order but rich asks are there any pending cases he's hearing from the second uh circuit will provide answers in june uh the nice thing about having fpc here is they are going to have so They'll many have that, answers like detailed information. yeah we're just yeah. not, it's so hard to keep track of everything on our level. Yeah. yeah. With everything going on. Yeah. We, were, we weren't good at it before. I'm not good at like, like I'll see a headline about a case and, and I'll research I'll read into the it. case, yeah. but I can't, I'm not a lawyer. I wanted to be one, but like, I never was good at like, okay, here's the docket. And like, here's like where it is in the court process and stuff. I'm not good at, at looking into that and stuff. And they filed this and that. And, and like, whatever. if you learn every one, most of, a lot of them do get shot down. So mm -hmm. like. It's just hard. It's just hard to devote so much energy. Right. right. Yeah. Per, until there's like a decision. Like this has yeah. happened. Like this I is going wait or this is going to happen. Until that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no way this is not passing. It's tough. One of the things that we talked about with FPC is trying to do more like focused campaigning in New York. Like they don't really do chapters. Yeah. But we try. We're going to try to be like, hey, like we're going to fundraise this money in hopes of attacking this specific thing. Like we have people that are affected by this law. Uh, I saw a really cool one with the one we saw on Discord today about uh, some kids in New York are suing because you can't buy a handgun yeah. uh, under 21. And they're like, every other thing, all my other whatevers, like I can do at 18 and I'm being discriminated against because I'm between 18 and 21 and you're not allowing me to buy like the most efficient tool to defend my life with. Like it's BS. And right. they're, they're suing New York State. So hopefully not going to go anywhere, but we got to keep trying. I thought it did go somewhere. No. Actually, no, it did get somewhere like the, the judge agreed with them, I believe. Yeah. Was that a federal one? Was that even in New York? I could be wrong. It was federal, I think. Anyways, FBC, they're coming June 10th and 11th for Freedom Weekend. And uh, we'll be able to answer hopefully a lot of our, our questions in that regard. And right. maybe give us a path forward too. that was one of the, the things that I'm really trying to work with them is, like I said, here are some very specific laws. We have standing like people are affected by them. We need to get rid of these laws. You know, I mean, when the Safe Act came out, everybody bought a lawn sign. If those, what were they, 15 bucks? Like the $15 times how many of those were sold? 50,000 or whatever it was. Like right. we could have used that money to fight some laws and maybe do some things instead of Selling putting the lawn, lawn sign signs. out. Yeah, like, I don't know. Some of that stuff, you know, is it just, I don't want to say virtue signaling, but I yeah. feel like some of it was. Like, do you actually care about getting these laws removed? Right, like how do we move the ball down the field rather than just right. doing the keep keeping the organization alive, right. like signaling to each other here. that we support the same things. Right, right. What else you got? Did we uh, sell the M134 Dylan Arrow? Uh, Dana's asking this. <laughs> that's a mini gun. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't sure. Yeah, that's how I'm like. What did what? we get one of those? <laughs> and I wasn't made aware. I wish we had one. Uh, I was uh, asking you specifically, PK. No, we did. We did not sell an AM134. So. <laughs> it is always, or I should say, it was always tempting at Knob Creek. There was a kit. There was every, a kit, man. Every year, there was at least two. I'm pretty sure, 12, like 12, 13 grand or something like that. One complete kit. I want to say it was a hundred, and that was still missing, like the motor, or like there was still like critical components, but it had like six barrels, had the receiver the link or like the, the shoot thing for it. Like it had a pedestal. It had a lot of stuff. Uh, man, I miss Knob Creek. Complete. I miss Knob Creek. That was a, uh, I'm glad I went. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad, glad you, got, yeah, I'm, I'm glad, glad got you got me to go. to go. Yeah. Did we go four times? Four or five. We went. 
I went 14. We went 15. And then 16. the venture crew, and then the last time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Four times uh, with me. You went once with your grandpa, right? At least once. That's where I. That's where I learned about it. How many times did you go with Bruce? Just once. Just once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's super cool. And I was just like, I had just like helped you put up the the AR five hundred in the range. Oh, really? And I still don't know anything. I thought about it was guns. when you were like younger. No, that's I knew, cool. I knew nothing about guns. It was yeah. twenty fourteen when I went. Totally spoiled on you. You're like this is dumb. Not, like, no, not, I knew you not, liked it, but I didn't, dude. I knew what a trigger was. Didn't appreciate like, it. I didn't know yeah. any of the calibers until I started sorting brass. And I had to do it by caliber <sighs> for no reason. Fucking pointless. Ass. That was so, <laughs> so ass. We, we used to sell way back like 2014. We used to sell little baggies of like, a, here's a hundred nine mil spent shell casings, uh, five bucks or whatever it was. And yeah, I would make Tyler do it. And then one, he had like a whole shelf. Here's all this nine mil. Here's all this 45. Here's all this five, five, six. It's all Whatever. And then you realize it's just sitting and there. And then, yeah. And then one day I was like, mm, yeah, this isn't selling. Like, let's just scrap it all. And I just opened them all up and I poured them into one big thing. And I just see them in the corner crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So sad. I worked so hard. He's hanging, hanging himself by his Pokemon belt. like <laughs> Skinny jeans uh, and a Pokemon belt. <laughs> stole my youth. Didn't know what I had when I had it. <laughs> oh, light in the sky. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you, you skipped a question to answer. Oh, do, can we go back to, w w did you skip some people? We have questions. I still have questions. Oh, good. Are you asking me to read more? Sure. Let's okay. do more. I like yeah. that. Uh, I don't know what that is. Um, Shane. Asks and essentially it's it's a long question, so I'm gonna TLDR it. Um his mom is 67 okay. and easy. You shame. know how it is when you try to tell somebody you love about guns and stuff, and it's just people don't always recept receive it that well. And uh he just wants to know about private lessons and any advice for an older lady who doesn't really listen. Um she's got an equalizer from us earlier this year. Oh, that's cool. Those are nice, those have nice slides. Um but it's just, it's hard right now with training for us because we're not really doing it other than the class. There's no space to do it, really. It's really difficult. We don't have space to work. Um, Which I guess would be another good use for a shed. There you go. Shed life. Shed life, dude. Just shed it up. Foreman trailer. Because you're like one of those construction trailers. Log cabin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get the Mennonites out of here again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Shane, I would say that for your mom, um, when, when we come at, this this training uh situation from like the family members perspective like i'll use the example of my wife right um so i have a couple of instructor credentials i've been around a little while doing this and it doesn't really matter how much training i have or how many people i've successfully taught when i'm talking to my own wife right yeah right because yeah. like she and I already have an established dynamic and relationship mm -hmm. and it doesn't include me being like a teacher for her in a lot right. of ways. Right. So like a lot of stuff goes in one ear and out the other. She doesn't necessarily take me all that seriously. And it's, it's just a dynamic that doesn't. Yeah. Like, so it's hard. that could yeah. be the situation here. I, I don't really know. But the other thing too is like, um, unfortunately a lot of people, they, when we talk about firearms training and we talk about like, I know how to people that like know how to shoot mm -hmm. what they know how to do is they know how to stand in a stationary position. Sure. With all the time in the world and all the conditions in their favor and put holes in paper. Right. And if right. the holes are all on the paper for some people, that's going to be good enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And they, they just don't understand the the value in it, which is an unfortunate reality, but, Mm -hmm. They also don't understand the amount of degradation that the, those skills are going to experience. Sure. When yeah. you have to do it like unexpectedly, like I didn't make a special trip to the range. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. um, when I have to draw my gun out of a holster, let's say, or when I have to move and shoot at the same time, or when mm -hmm. I have to shoot my gun while I'm looking maybe at something else because my eyes are fixed on something that's in front of me and I'm not 
properly looking mm -hmm. where I should be looking, right? There's all these different things that people sure. don't necessarily account for or understand. There's and you don't training. know what you don't know in terms of, of training or in terms of skills or in terms of, you know, I, what can happen. I, I do wish, and it, it is tough. It's obviously guns and training and all this stuff. It can be a very like macho thing or a very, there's a lot of bravado. Can, there's can, a lot of whatever, machismo. Way, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, I do, I, 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 one of those things I wish we could like call people out on whatever, especially a bro where he's like, oh, I know how to shoot. Like, all right, here's your drill. Here's like, here's the easiest, like tactical games. Skirmish, like little I would just two minute thing, drill. like or what? Right, shoot, any, shoot any of those things, seven yards. like and and you will quickly see, like you said, what you you don't know, what you don't know, and you're like, oh well, I've only ever shot bullseye in the range, and I do great with that. And it's like, oh well, now that there's a few of us watching, and there's a timer, and there's a, a weird environment that you've never practiced. I'm just and you're, you're, yeah. you're, you have to perform on demand, and you right. get one opportunity right. to get it right. And you know, I mean, going back to the original. The caller's question. Uh, I mean, we are talking about self-defense of protecting and preserving your own life or your loved one's lives. You know, I mean, uh, it's it's not uh, I don't know when you were talking. I was kind of thinking of like, what what would be a good analogy? I, I don't know. I don't do this, but like downhill skiing. Right. Like you can go over to like a little bunny hill and like go down or whatever, like like a like a jump, say like something like where black diamond. you. Yeah. Like you you got to a point where you could do it. Like you were in college, maybe, you know, you were good at it or whatever. Uh, and like kind of same with shooting. Like, oh, I was in the army. I learned how to shoot in the army, but it's been 20 years since I've done that. Or, right, right. or I, I got a gun and my uncle, the cop trained me, you know, when I got my gun, but I have never really taken any serious training classes. It's like, all right, would you go down that double black diamond? Like at the ski event with a thousand people watching like this, that and it's like, oh no, I would never do that. It's like, okay, put that wherever you want to put it and then put defending your life. Like which one of those things is going to be a little bit more stressful or yeah. maybe important to you? I would say defending your life when or you, your loved when you're ones. Actually life. Using so, that. so now you you know like so you you would have trained for the ski jump, but not you know it's just you know. I'm well, but trying also to think of if like, you go over the ski jump and you do it right and you survive, nobody's going to come back and try to Monday morning quarterback. Oh uh, sure, you right, put, put you in, in jail, prison right? Because yeah. you jumped it wrong, right? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or you didn't yeah, jump yeah. it at the right time, or you didn't have enough justification when you jumped it, right? <laughs> so, like, I think that there's a lot of things about defending yourself. Your skis were, like, your skis were, I don't know. Too long. You had too three, many uh, ski, assault too many skis? On your assault skis, skis? Right? Yeah. Your skis had too many features? Yeah. <laughs> like, there's any number of things that can go wrong when we're talking about life and death. Yeah, man. Like, and, and you support stuff and whatever. So, yeah, I, I just think that a lot of people should approach it with a more, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm open mind, I guess, and sure. just realize like why it's so, it's not important because it's a gun and it's not important because it's your second amendment, right? It's important because it's life or death. It's your life or somebody else's life, but it's also potentially like your life getting taken away from you yeah. after the fact. Or being like seriously, like your life is not the same. It's never, it, no matter what, like, yeah. even if you were exonerated and found to have committed so psychological no, no aspect wrong, of that, that you learned about Yeah, I mean, there's, and, right. Yeah. yeah, we definitely right. talk about the psychological impact that, you know, something like that would have on a, on a person. Um, and that can't necessarily be overstated as well, because yeah. a lot of people, everybody's going to respond differently. Sure. Right? Not sure. everybody can kind of compartmentalize. Even no response is still a response. Like, oh, for sure. I would rather deal with that stuff, though, than be dead. So oh, I'll yeah. take the training. Yeah. 100%. The, you right. know. Even, even yeah, yeah. in the state of New York, like there's that guy down in the city uh, on the, that on was the subway? on the subway. Yeah. With that incident the choke that off. happened down there. And, you know, uh, it seemed like everything that was done was done. I don't want to say correctly, but I want to say at least in the spirit of like being compassionate. And trying to and just being help. a dude, it's not like that dude was like trained or anything, right? Like he was. I mean, he's a marine, so he and he's an infantry guy, so he has like basic marine sure. combative stuff. But it's not like he's like a public servant, or he's got like you know, right? This is the way we're supposed to deal with this. Like I'm just a dude riding the subway, he's and I'm dealing with this how own, I, you know, right. yeah, like just trying to do his thing, and uh, he's put in the situation where. He's forced to take action. Yeah, don't right? sure. Like, really like, no, don't make me. Nobody do this. wants to don't like make me. I want to listen to the TFB live stream on Spotify. I'm just on my way to work. But if you listen don't to do this. the audio and stuff like that, the guy was clearly saying like, I'm, I'm okay with going, going to jail. I'm going to hurt people. Like he was, he was really disturbed. 
And so what are you going to do? You're going to sit there and wait until somebody's actually hurt. Yeah. And then we're going to take action. And now sure. we've got to deal right. with reactionary or whatever. Right yeah. now we've got to deal with a medical emergency as well. So I think they try to do everything correctly. And I think that even when the situation had kind of like subsided, they put the guy in the recovery position and it wasn't like the Marine acted on his own, right? There were two other people like holding that were also and... involved in restraining the guy. So to say that he acted unreasonably means that three people all were acting unreasonably, not even in concert with each other, like three independent actors sure. all saw the same thing and all had an unreasonable response. I think that sounds like the reasonable response at that point. I, I just, the other thing that sucks is like, I wasn't there. So that also was hard. Sure. Yeah. You don't, you don't see every detail. You know, you always say like, you're going to have a jury look at your, that whole like three seconds, well, three to two minutes, whatever that, that all took place. And they're going to overanalyze it for hundreds of hours. They're going to have so many. Yeah. They have so much more luxury of time and analysis to get in the weeds. So that's one thing I cannot wait to get back up and running. Um, cause we're still talking about, you know, finding a handgun for this lady. Um, I'm excited to have, the rentals back the pistol yeah. rentals we've had a couple of pistol rental questions and uh we just don't have any pistol rentals we don't have the storage for it really tough. yeah um we are hoping to get this table actually swapped out soon for a display case this is our last stream maybe boys. <laughs> no that just the next stream will be a display case not the next stream but hopefully in a few streams we'll have a display case here it just won't be this lovely table that goes up and down Oh, that could be too. It could be in a shed. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice, Sonny? Yeah. <laughs> Lock you in there. <laughs> what <Hello>. uh, <laughs> What other questions do we have? What kind of locks are you going to use for the shed? <laughs> Why would I tell you? <laughs> I'll have Brian pick them. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, I lost my... Oh, yeah, that was another question. Do we have a Hellcat Pro for the range rental? No, we don't. We have, I think, a Glock 19. So if you want to try a handgun... It's a good one to start with. That that That's, is the most common one to start yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. What's going to be fun in a couple weeks? Um, not next week, but the twenty uh, first. We're going to have Colin from RPO come on stream. Sweet. I'm excited about that. Twenty first isn't that a Sunday? I don't think so. It is. Okay. It's got to be the twenty fifth. Twenty fifth then. Yeah. The twenty fifth. One of those days. We'll have Brad. yeah, Colin. You said Colin. from RPO. Rochester, Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra. Precision Optics. Rochester Precision Optics, a sponsor of Freedom Weekend. Yeah, the biggest sponsor. They are the biggest sponsor. And uh, it, it is always pretty amazing. There's a ton of other ones, but I am amazed at the uh, military industrial or gun uh, industry. Yeah. The <laughs> manufacturers that are, yeah, here in Rochester. Um, RPO makes a ton of different precision, high-end glass uh, assemblies and optics parts and stuff. I don't know the specific SIG models, the, the Echoes, right? Actually, the yeah, thermals. The thermals. Uh, the thermal. Uh, well, did anybody, did you guys hear that on the stream? That was a really fast motorcycle. That bike was going way Peg faster that. than how, the how fast do you think it would have gone? 90. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. That was fast. <clears throat> Zip by. Uh, but yeah, they make, uh, they make a lot of cool stuff. They make the glass for the Romeo 1 Pro that SIG makes. So okay. Pistol optic yep. Yeah, yeah. With the aspheric glass technology that's such an awesome optic right there is no parallax really to that optic. that's pretty cool it's it's as yeah. well i shouldn't say no it's as close to parallax free as you're gonna get so the reason they are a sponsor is they're hiring they're almost always hiring right. for almost every different position uh because they're just one of those companies that's they're constantly growing. always growing they're always getting cool government contracts so uh between engineering and marketing sales warehouse you know like assembly uh you know if you've got a, pretty much as long as you're like not a felon and a u.s citizen and graduated high school like they will find a job for you at any at any level so I should pretty apply. cool i should apply over there yeah man i should get in over there that'd be that'd be a pretty rad job i'm sure it would they help. probably have some pretty cool stuff in like r d for you i bet or like you know I, I like should talk testing to or whatever yeah, yeah yeah that'd be sweet just try to break this Tell us how to okay. not break it. <laughs> okay. Can so, do. Any questions for that industry, be sure to save them. Uh, again, not next stream, but the stream after. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they're having, I don't want to say they're having a job fair here per se, but uh, I think that is kind of the point of them coming to Freedom Weekend is uh, trying to get trying to get some gigs. We got 
probably the best question we've been asked on the stream. Let's ask Ever. it. This is the it. reason I live for the stream. Let's hear it. Think back, think back to your childhood, Brandon. Blues Clues. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Steve, he's right there. Yeah, Steve, he's right there. <laughs> the shovel and the pal. Yeah. In a fight. Can we get them for Freedom Weekend? A in a fight. And- which one of those would win? The shovel or the pal? Oh, I got. All right. You, you, who, who? I got money on the pal. That bro does that. Look, he looks unhinged. He looks like he could take your life. Who would win in a fight? <laughs> new Steve's. I don't like new Steve. Yeah. I'm not a fan. Is, that, is his name Steve? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Regardless. <laughs> I'm going to say shovel because he could have sharpened like his, his edge yeah. or whatever. Shank and yeah, he could like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like shovel. What could you hurt on a shovel? But like, oh, you're thinking practice, like, but like a barrel or a bucket, like you poke a hole in the bucket and now he's like, bucket. right. He's no, like, his essential use in. is, yeah, Jesus Christ. But Jesus you, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but what if you split the, uh, you, you could, okay. Yeah, it's a you plastic could, shovel. You know, yeah. These are plastic. This is plastic on plastic. We're not talking metal on metal. Oh, like, man, yeah, this is, I'm going to be up all night now. <laughs> I'm just going based on the energy of the pal. He just doesn't, like, it looks like that man's been to prison. He just has that smile. He's got a bigger mouth. He could burn he, That's shovel. what I'm saying. Like, he's just creepy. I don't know. I'm going to say, I'm going to say shovel could beat pal. Only because shovel can go inside. inside. <laughs> Once it's inside. I, I feel like if you can go inside the other person, you win. <laughs> you win. <laughs> you can go in, right? I don't know. Do you, yes, remember, you might be too young. Do you remember the show Celebrity Deathmatch? Vaguely. The, the cartoon The one? cartoon. Yeah. The claymation. I remember watching Sneaking It when yeah, I was a yeah. kid, but I was way oh, too yeah. young. To I was too it. young. It was one of those, like, I had to, like, turn the TV on. And I had, like, an old TV that would make, you know, like, when you turn an old TV on, it would make that, like, it sounds like, 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 yeah, like not an LCD. Everybody fucking, knows. Yeah. That like, on. and my room was right next to my parents' room. So I'd have to like, huh, and like turn it on and I'd have it on volume like one. And I'm like right up against the TV so I can hear it. Right. And yeah, I remember watching that show. <laughs> I would pay, like, we need to find the animators of that so they can animate a shovel sure. versus pale. <laughs> How would that celebrity not Unreal Engine show? 5, I don't want it. <laughs> I, bet, I bet you could uh, uh, get Chet GPT or one of those. Oh, <laughs> to, yeah. To choreograph it? You can get an AI model to make prompt that Prompt it right fight. now. I'm going to. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord. It's probably going to say it can't do it. Why? Because it's an auto. It's, a, it's an auto. If I wanted <laughs> to avoid murdering my friend Shovel, I am, I am a pal. I am a pal. <laughs> and then write it from the other perspective, too. I am a shovel, and I don't want to kill yeah. my friend Pal. How do I As not an AI, they him? don't condone or encourage violence. Chat, chat GPT has gotten really cucked, I guess would be the word. Because you're teaching it to be. No, because it just has the influence. <laughs> bro, if this was my chat GPT, uh, it'd be, unhinged, it'd be done. Bro. It'd be done. The like, nukes had already been launched. <laughs> <laughs> Wars would have been fought. Oh, oh my would God. Be going at it. So, uh, oh, okay. With that said, shovel and Jesus pal. Christ. So I can't do this, but but with that said, shovel and pal from Blue Clues are already friendly characters who work together to solve problems. Yes, shovel is small, young, and a playful character who loves digging in the sand. While pal is shovel's older, smarter, and more mature brother or sister. Oh wow, okay, oh, that's progressive. So. Wait, did we just assume their gender? Yeah, that was. Shit. I looked at the picture and I couldn't tell, so I assumed they were both boys. J.K. Rowling is just fuming somewhere. I don't know. Oh, she'd actually probably support that. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so it's not telling me anything so, like good, but I think Pal, Pal is older, so I don't like how it like it gave so you a response, a step, is what you're but saying. then it thought a minute, and then it was like, well, you know what? Well, you know, I can, I I like can dig into this. Too. I can I can dig into this. Let's see, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Uh, what is, I don't know their names, pal, <laughs> Shovel and Pal. Yeah, they're they're called Shovel and Pal. Are they? Mm-hmm. What, uh, do you remember, you have kids that are younger yeah. than me. Do you remember like the original Steve from Blue's mm-hmm. Clues? Who, who replaced Steve? Some Asian dude. Yeah. No, I that's I the new one. There was Steve name. then. Steve too. Oh, I don't know. More importantly, do you guys watch Bluey? That's a great I, do, I have not. I'm too My old. granddaughter watches it. Oh, I forget sometimes that you're Grandpa Pat. I know. Oh. So yeah. How old's your granddaughter? She's gonna. She's like ten months old. Dude, that's crazy. She talks and stuff. Yeah, yeah isn't she, that well, cute? She says, she says "Mama" at Aww. least. I've seen her say that. And uh, she crawls now and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, she's wicked cute. 
And she smiles Aww. all the time. So fun. Kids are so yeah. fun. Man. It was Joe. Okay. Joe, I don't remember him. I remember when that happened. I remember when Steve left. Yeah. I don't remember. That was more like. Do you have a picture of him? I can't picture him. Uh, I, don't remember I remember the transition from Steve to Joe. Like, that's yeah. how young I was. Mm. Um, what happened to Steve? It was so, a good show, though. I for like Steve. Did he get like me too? No, <laughs> Steve actually like recently came back into it's just, our lives. It's like a sad story, isn't it? He got like depressed and like. I just think he went to college or something. There was rumors that he was like clapping cheeks overseas, but he definitely wasn't. Um, yeah, I, I heard that. I think it was almost like a Michael Jackson sort of story in that like his child, his his adulthood was like stolen from him in a way. I, that's that's what I remember the takeaway that I read, and it was like he did that for so long. He was like, you know, like. Just, Talking to the mailbox at his at his house or whatever, you know what I mean? Like he was yeah. going, like it was too much. I don't know. If and I he know. had to like he's got to, he's like in character. He all had to the do time. his own thing. Yeah. So Steve was just too method, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> he was just too, Him just and uh, Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah. One of the big reasons <laughs> he was losing his hair and didn't want to go bald on a child's TV show. Okay. Uh, he was interested in pursuing other career opportunities after leaving his music career, and he's released <laughs> several albums. That's pretty um, cool. Death metal. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck your clues. <laughs> <laughs> but they played it off in the show that Steve went off to college and his younger brother Joe. Came okay. In. So that's when there they started pushing that, the agenda to go to school. Go to college, kids. Yeah. Uh, that. Typical. That's so great. Don't do that. Either. But I remember that transition. My my favorite part of that whole thing oh, is, so Steve like, can transition. is like he recognized <laughs> that like nobody's going for a bald guy on a kid's right like, yeah. He, yeah. he can have like a full head nah. he's got beautiful hair like <laughs> he's acceptable as soon as he's bald he's fucking creepy nope. you're yeah no nope. you're done like but you, it's also like no but you know what i mean isn't that weird like if you picture like a kid show with like a bald right, uncle yeah, yeah. fester looking dude you're like i'm out the kids are in the car bro, bro, how come the police are here again steve bro, bro? <laughs> yeah bro, 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 bro? it's not not gonna happen so why why is Bluey so great? I keep seeing like Bluey and memes and stuff. I never watched it. First of all, it's Australian, so it's just it's very like, oi mate, e cheeky little cunt, e funny, funny little boy. Wow, <laughs> now I have to watch Bluey. I don't. I don't want to. They're like, calling people. As, I'm in. As a parent, <laughs> it's just so real. Like usually, especially kids shows. There's a lot of like, there's a, like there's, there's like, there's, there's like a curtain there and like the parents are superheroes and the parents are whatever. And it's just very real. And like the dad will come home from work and he's like, I'm fucking tired. And like, <laughs> the kids will want to play. And they'll be like, oh, okay. And it's, just, it's very raw and very real. And it's very like, it just shows a family like hanging out on a lazy Sunday. And like, we're just living life. Guys and it's, it's very, dudes. it is, it's very, yeah. And it's very like chill because it's Australian. And it's just very like, I don't know. It's a it's a very, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, in the 50s, they said this about whatever the new shit, you know, or whatever. But it, it just it feels very fresh and it feels very raw. And I know they're cartoons, but it's just like you, you'll sit there and you be like, shit, that happens in our house. Like, yeah, yeah. I heard there was some controversy, though, recently, uh, because apparently the dad uh, made some fat phobic remarks. Oh, oh, really? How dare yeah. you? He stood on the scale and then he was like, oh. <laughs> he was like what's the matter dad and he was like i gotta work out <laughs> do, some, do some exercise and like apparently that was a problem for that is people. A, dude and like, body positivity got, <laughs> lizzo was the standard of dude, beauty like yeah i'm positive <laughs> that she's too heavy <laughs> I'm i know i'm that, ready that, that body loved. is too heavy were you uh, pat I'm, I'm sure you were were you old enough for the barney hate like, do you remember when it was cool to hate Barney? No, yeah, of course. No, Barney was cool. Because I think I was adults, right in that sweet spot of like, yeah, Barney was life. Like, I loved Barney as a kid, but like, I watched the doc, the Barney documentary, and they had like college competitions on who can like kill Barney, and it was like a very why because it was so happy. The parents couldn't stand it, and people couldn't stand it, and like well, counterculture. I think, I think Barney I was like you. the first show. Yeah, me. right. But it was the first show where they were really like pushing. Like Sesame Street wasn't all like the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? They had sure. like, little segments. And they would get dark and sad sometimes. And like, they would talk about like real sure, stuff. Barney right? was just like, always happy, wasn't he was it? Like, there was no, pretty much it was like, like Teletubby level of just like, yeah. Even when like they're solving a problem, like it's a very like, I lost yeah. my fucking dump truck over <laughs> here. My dog like, died. <laughs> no, that is, no. Too dark. No. But that's what they do on Barney. It's all just happy. 
But the dogs don't die. But the dog would have never, yeah. The, like the Barney's dog my, would never die. That was like a sad, be like a Sesame Street thing. They like, would never oh, I'm sad because my dog died. Like, well, sometimes dogs die. So my dog went to another dimension. Here's Elmo, and you'll forget. There you go, yeah. My, my dog's in the DMT realm. <laughs> my dog's talking to elf people. Uh, He's talking to the machine. Bluey, elves. no, don't go. Don't talk to the elf people. <laughs> my dog's on the, on the uh, astral plane. These DMT cookies suck, bro. I've got nothing else. We had a kid come in Good. earlier this week, and he said that last week's stream was like one of the best we've ever had. Really? So <laughs> right in front of me. And I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it was. Yeah, I'm sure it was. It was really good. I just, That's I'll, awesome. I'll take more Thursdays. Last off. week's stream was really good. Like, I kind of. You guys practiced. stayed super long. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I was I was into it when we were doing it. But like. Watching it, it sucks, right? Yeah, watching it, I wasn't. I wasn't. I don't know. I, I like. I'm super critical, man. I always want this show to be like really just exciting and good and, and post nut. I always post, watch post our show. Clarity. Yeah, there's but like I try not to watch the whole thing. I try to catch little clips because again, I'm hypercritical of myself and yeah, just hard. It's hard to like watch this. something you're in. I just feel like I look. Like I like this because I see the camera. But yeah. like, I'm glad that we're sitting down tonight because that's a big. My biggest complaint is like when I watch the stream, I feel like I'm like shifting my sure yeah. Yeah. And, like fidgeting a lot. Because I'm old. I can't stand still for too long. Cool. Sesame Street was the addiction. Mr. Rogers was the cure. <laughs> I don't have beer, but I would drink to that. Oh, yeah. I'm out. yeah Mr. I'm Rogers out. is... I'm out of beer, which is what's telling me that it's... The clock on the wall says it's time to go. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Rogers is a real one. Um, was. I, I Rest in peace. Whatever dimension he's, he's in. Still I'm sure he's there. tearing it up. He's still <laughs> <laughs> Because clearly <laughs> he, he left was, his physical he body a, and he's he going hard, <laughs> going hard in the paint. Who was the king in his like when he would turn the corner like in a little trolley land? Yeah. Who was that like King Friday? Was yeah, it was Friday. Was? Yeah, Dude, yeah. nice job. He's just slaying it. Dude, <laughs> <He's> just, <laughs> Dude I love Kami. <laughs> Give it to the, the puppets. Man. Mr. Rogers is great, dude. He taught me a lot of stuff. For sure. All right. I love well, you, Mr. Rogers. Goodbye, neighbors. Yeah. And on that note, <laughs> won't you be we love Mr. Rogers, my neighbor?